Hello, welcome everybody to Getting APIs to Work. In today's episode, we will look at the five API styles. When you look at APIs, they are just a way of how two applications can communicate and exchange data. So in the end, APIs are a communication between two applications. And there are different ways how you can design communication environments. And that is where the API styles come in. So what we want to do is take a look a little bit beyond specific technologies. So I will mention things such as Kafka and REST and gRPC and GraphQL, but these are all technologies and they are specific examples of some styles. So what we want to do today is look at the styles and not at the technologies. And really what that means is we're looking at APIs at, as what they are at the very core. And in my mind, one of the most useful ways to think of an API is that it is a language. It's a language how applications can communicate and there are different ways how you can design those languages. And it's important to always think about these design options and to know what you can do so that you can make good design decisions. Because in the end, there is no such thing as the best API technology or the best API style. It all depends on the design constraints. Like all design, design should always be based on constraints. And in that case, the constraints that we have are who's consuming the API, what do their expectations look like, what are the technologies that they might prefer, what are the things that they, they can easily use. Constraint number two is who's producing the API, meaning maybe if I'm an organization, I might have certain experience using some technologies. I might have developers who are capable of implementing APIs in the technology. So that's an important constraint as well. And constraint number three is to think about the problem. So what does the API do that I'm trying to implement here? And I think that is also very important because for some APIs, communication patterns can be very different than for others. For example, in some cases, communications may be more based on the consumer initiating the communication, whereas in other cases, the communication flow might more be the provider actually making the consumer aware of events, in which case maybe you want to reverse the flow of the communication. So let's look at the five API styles and add examples for each of them. So the first one is called the tunnel style. The tunnel style, you can think of that as knowing where you can get something and knowing what you can do there. And that is a very old idea of how to do APIs. It's based on the idea of calling procedures, calling functions within computer programs which is why people often also refer to this as remote procedure call. And this is something that is fairly popular. And the one example where this particular, particular style is used a lot nowadays is Google's gRPC, which is this idea of calling computer functions somewhere. So this style, the, the, the tunnel style, really is mostly focused on being able to call functions that are available somewhere. So it's very much kind of focused on computer code and just making that available to the outside world. That's style number one. Style number two. Style number two is the resource style. The resource style is more based around the actual problem space, where the idea is you expose resources and then those resources are something that you can interact with. So, the resource style is also very popular. One of the most popular examples right now is to use HTTP and to describe those APIs in OpenAPI. And then the main thing that you expose in the resource style are resources. So things such as products or a shopping cart or a customer or an inventory. And all of these resources then are available and you can interact with them. So they support certain interactions such as asking, is that product available? Or where is this product available? Or what is in the shopping cart? Right, so that's the resource style. Again, it's very popular. It's used a lot. It's probably the most popular style right now for 
openly available public APIs. And there's a good reason for that because it's really nicely supported with open API and a lot of people know how to use it. Now, if you want to go a step further, there is another style that is kind of related, but a little bit different, which is called the hypermedia style. The hypermedia style also is based on resources, but it's also based on linking resources to each other. So the best thing, the best idea how to think about the hypermedia style is to think of the web. That is exactly how the web works. You access a resource and then you look at that resource and that resource tells you possible next steps. So for example, you could think of a product being available through such an API and then the product would make available to you its next actions that you can um, that you can use for this product such as asking in which in which warehouses is this product available or how long would it take to order this product from a certain address so it's exactly the way how you communicate on the web and it's a really nice way to support workflows which is the case for many API scenarios that it's not just isolated calls of things, but really whole workflows. The hypermedia style also is used in a, in a good number of APIs. And very often these APIs are also over HTTP and they are described by open API. But the difference then is that the representations are not just data, but they also are what you call controls, which are these links in the data so that you can actually follow these links throughout your conversation with the API. So that was style number three. Style number four is quite a bit different. Style number four is called the query style. And the query style depends on the idea that you're interacting with an API with a provider where there's a lot of data. And then the, the main API idea is to have this data model available to you and to give you the ability to query into this data model. And then there's a query language that allows you to do that. And on the API provider side, that query will be evaluated and then you get the results. A very popular example of this specific style is GraphQL. So GraphQL is this idea of having a large data model available, which is described in a schema. And then GraphQL is this query language that allows you to ask for a certain part, small subset of this big data graph and get that back in, in a response. GraphQL was created by Facebook and there's a good reason why they did that. Facebook has a really, really big data source, the whole social graph with all the users and posts and likes and mentions and so forth. And GraphQL gives you a very flexible way of saying, I want this user and the last five posts that they appeared in and so forth. So it's a very effective way of how an application can query into, into this graph. So that was style number four, the query style. Now let's look at style number five. Style number five is different because the communication pattern is reversed. It's the event-based style. So in the event-based style, the main thing that you focus on are events that are happening. So an event may be something like somebody ordered something or something was shipped or a new shipment came into the warehouse and here's an updated inventory. So, all of this means that instead of asking for something, you're listening for events that are happening. And in most cases for this pattern, what you have is what's called a pub sub model, a publish subscribe model. So consumers of the API listen to events and they get notified for specific events that they subscribe to. So I might subscribe to events of the type something was bought and then whenever somebody buys something, an event is generated and that event be, is made available to me. So in that case, the whole communication is driven by those events. This is also something that is used a fair bit. The most popular technology that is mentioned in that space nowadays is Kafka. So Kafka is this messaging infrastructure that, that uses this publish subscribe model. 
in, in Kafka's case, the things you subscribe to are called topics. And then Kafka allows you a very, very scalable and very fast delivery of all these events from the event producers to the event consumers. So that was API style number five. Okay, to wrap things up, if you look at all these API styles, none of them is per se good or bad. There are certain design styles to design APIs. And when you look at an API and your task is to design an API, you shouldn't always go for the default solution. It's good to have some starting point that you say, everything else being equal, this is what I want to do. But you should also be aware that there are these options and sometimes it may make sense to use a different style for a different API because there is no single best API style for all problems and all scenarios. So just be aware of that. It's really this famous saying I think that, that I use a lot which is if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. So avoid being your API, your preferred API language just being the hammer and then you hit every problem with that hammer. Be aware of the different hammers that are out there. There's five different types of them and make an informed choice every time you have to design APIs and then you will end up with a good way to solve the problem that is in front of you when you have to design an API. And in the end, what you want to do is to design a good language how providers and consumers can get stuff done in a given scenario. That was it. Thanks very much for listening. I hope that was useful for you. If it was, please like this video and please subscribe to my channel. I will have more API stuff coming up as usual. So have a great day and see you soon. Bye.